Lee trying to create the space on the dribble. And she will be hit with the charge. So the basketball over to Tuskegee. Brittany, nice cross dribble inside the paint. Push left side with the pass to Manuel and a whistle. They'll call Isabel with the foul. Bowling to the line to shoot. Brittany gets the first. Tuskegee got to overcome this little drought. Try to steal some of this momentum here. 3.33 remains before the break. Bowling for the second. Cox Ames fires and rattled that one good as well. Lady Dragons, half court set. Neal back out front. Tuskegee could use a stop here defensively. Roman McKee takes it away from Neal. She'll go back down the length of the floor and got the easy lay, and that's exactly what Tuskegee needed that trip down the floor. Good defensive effort, results in the basket. Lead cut to six. See if they can go back to back now. Mid-stripe, Lady Dragons barely get it there to Curry. Curry back to Neal. Shot clock at seven for the Lady Dragons. Isabel pops out right side, whistles, and they get her for the travel. So the turnover gives the basketball back to Tuskegee now. We can make this a four point ball game. Good defensive effort. Let's see what they do offensively. Bowling, hard push right side. Brittany in the paint, bounce at the block. Norman McKee. Slides through, got some space to the cylinder. Missed on the shot, though. Nadia just a bit off balance inside the paint. Jordan Neal handles for the Lady Dragons. Inside the paint, they got it to Curry. Now down in the corner on the head fake, on the move is Lee to the rack, and she got it to fall. Tuskegee back the other way. Bolin out front. Three-pointer off the mark. Rebound chased down. Manuel got it for the Tigerettes. Over the Thurman McKee. Back to Brittany in traffic. And is batted around and almost stolen in the front court by Lee. Under two minutes remains. Abdul Rahim on the floor now. She'll replace Bolin in the lineup. Back out for Coach Dixon. Is Mina Guevara Ross back out on the floor? So far side of the floor, Ariel McElroy, the junior, to inbound it for Tuskegee. Entry pass, Thurman McKee. Nine to shoot for the Tigerettes now. Abdul Rahim handles. Five to shoot. Abdul Rahim got some space, drops back with the jumper. Can it for the Tigerettes? She knew what she was up against in terms of the clock. Got it to fall on the jumper. Back the other way, jumper right side, answered by Rivera Goss. So they trade baskets with a minute 25 left first half. Abdul Rahim, SIC newcomer of the week. They give it on a weave, this is Willis. Victoria back to Abdul Rahim. Tried to bounce it out front, threw it in traffic. Luckily, Willis there for the Tigerettes. Jachoria at the block, too deep, missed on the shot. 60 seconds left, first half. One-on-one -on -one basketball. This is Gavira Goss. Good defensive recovery there by Nadia Thurman McKee. Behind that play to catch up and knock the basketball away. Take a look at that replay play as Thurman McKee trailing the back of that play. And comes up with a gem there for the Tigerettes. On the inside, whistles as Thurman McKee can't get to the block soon enough. Corey is fouled, and she will go to the line. This is something that Coach Powell will certainly have to address at the halftime. She and assistant coach Ashley Bruner. Right down low, the battle is being won by the Lady Dragons. 
Curry, the junior from Jackson, Tennessee, from the line, got the first free throw. Curry for the second of two. And knocked him down to take the lead back to 10 for the Lady Dragons. 53 seconds remains. Clock stuck here right now. It's not even running. I only get it going. Abdul Rahim works it right side. Floater to the rack. Missed on the shot. No set play there by the Tigerettes at that trip down the floor. Basketball's loose on the floor now. Tie up near the sideline. And a travel violation called against Sabria Lee and the Lady Dragons. So with 39 seconds left, Tuskegee goes back to the offensive set. Abdul Rahim will pick it up now and the clock will wind. She's free, fires a three-pointer, creased the rim with it. Thurman McKee tried to save it, and they do in the corner. Out front, this is McElroy. She's free, got a three there, shot an air ball. Tuskegee just absolutely cold from the floor in this basketball game. Twenty-one seconds left, first half of play. Lady Dragons lead it by ten. Neal had it bounced and taken away by the Tigerettes. Up the floor to Willis. You have to run that down. Tries to save it and almost throws it out of bounds. McElroy to Abdul Rahim. Now McElroy left side to the rack. Missed on the shot. Rebound and a put back by Manuel and she got it. Jasmine Manuel, the sophomore, able to stay at the back of that play. Got a rebound and it, all in one motion. Got it to the cylinder. Look at this effort by Manuel. Leaning back and got the forward roll on the shot. So she'll be shooting the free throw here with just half a second remaining in the first half. Manuel rattled and missed. And that'll do it for first half action here from the Chappie James Center. At the intermission, it's the Lady Dragons of Lane College with a 43-35 lead over the Tigerettes of Tuskegee University. We'll take a break here on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, it's kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. Students make the institution special. You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. Don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things, and that makes for a better company is diverse minds. I am Kaylin Parham, a graduating senior, construction science and management major, hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. In, in this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented. I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not gonna be a lot of people like me, and that's okay, because we're still working for diversity, but the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have black girl here in a 
Asian guy there, but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs, you'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And that's gotta be part of the leadership. By Procore taking the lead on this scholarship program and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the, or the other HBCUs. The Living the Veil of Ignorance statue represent Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Living the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. Hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we open to giving these students chances, get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. You just gotta give them a chance. STEM careers are one of the fastest growing fields, yet women of color comprise less than 10% of the workforce within these high paying jobs. Tuskegee University is changing this. In 2018, we were awarded a grant from the National Science Foundation to develop computer science career awareness for young African American women. In 2019, we established the Campaign for Leadership and Excellence Scholarship. It provides future female engineers with financial support to pursue their educational goals. Today, Tuskegee continues to educate African American women in STEM fields, empowering them to pursue their chosen careers and providing the foundation they need to transform science, medicine, and technology. If a STEM career is in your future, explore what Tuskegee can offer you. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. So Tuskegee University is not just a place where I'm earning my degree. I'm learning how to be bold. And I've actually gotten that feedback from previous internships. Tuskegee has definitely helped me increase my leadership skills. Tuskegee Pride is one of the biggest takeaways you get from the university. Um, not only are you getting a degree when you come here, but you're also going to get that pride for yourself. It's going to encourage you to excel even more and also just reach places that you've never reached before. I love being at a small school, especially um, in the engineering classroom. I actually have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my professors. They don't hesitate to take 20 to 30 minutes to explain something again. The most valuable thing that Tuskegee students leave the university with, besides a great education, is definitely a family. Tuskegee is lovingly called Mother Tuskegee because she's like a mother. It's not easy at all times, but like a mother, she's there to nurture you along the way, whether it be your professors, fellow students, the community, they're always there to nurture you and help you to succeed. My parents met here. They've been able to have lifelong careers with their education from Tuskegee. Everybody's willing to lend a helping hand. Um, if you need anything extra done, 
Nobody is hesitant to get it done. And it's a place that I can literally call home for forever. There's something to do every single day, especially homecoming. It's insane on, on game day. Everybody was having a great time. The students were out in the shed cheering on the football team. So it also made me really um, excited about joining the March of Crimson Piper Band because they are another support system for the football team. The band also plays for the volleyball team. Sometimes we go to the baseball and softball team games as well. It is very easy to get involved here at Tuskegee University. There are so many student organizations, whether that's um, student Government Association, the choir, you have clubs within your colleges. There's literally a place for everybody here at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee is a very diverse campus. Even though Tuskegee University is a historically black college, we have different races, different cultures from the students to the faculty. Tuskegee University molds its students into great leaders. We learn how should we look in corporate America, how should we speak in corporate America, and things of that nature. We bring back people who work for um, major companies to kind of give you how they got there, what were their resources they utilized here at the university to get to their level as well. they need to transform science, medicine, and technology. If a STEM career is in your future, explore what Tuskegee can offer you. There's something to do every single day, especially homecoming. It's insane on, on game day. Everybody was having a great time. The students were out in the shed cheering on the football team. So it also made me really um, excited about joining the March of Crimson Piper Band because they are another support system for the football team. The band also plays for the volleyball team. Sometimes we go to the baseball and softball team games as well. It is very easy to get involved here at Tuskegee University. There are so many student organizations, whether that's um, student Government Association, the choir, you have clubs within your colleges. There's literally a place for everybody here at Tuskegee University. Tuskegee is a very diverse campus. Even though Tuskegee University is a historically black college, we have different races, different cultures from the students to the faculty. Tuskegee University molds its students into great leaders. We learn how should we look in corporate America, how should we speak in corporate America, and things of that nature. We bring back people who work for um, major companies to kind of give you how they got there, what were their resources they utilized here at the university to get to their level as well. And we're back live inside the Chappie James Center. Halftime, Tigerettes of Tuskegee trailing to the Lady Dragons of Lane College 43-35 in a surprising first half of action that sees the Lady Dragons with the lead at the break. But while we have a few minutes before we get into second half play, joined by the head coach of the Tigers of Tuskegee University, Mr. Taylor. Coach, thanks for joining us. Oh, a pleasure. My pleasure to be here. This, is, this has been a great half of basketball. And uh, when we went up there and played uh, maybe a week and a half, 10 mm -hmm. days ago, uh, the women's game was a very uh, competitive game, just like the men's game. So the women are good both on both sides. Yeah, we were talking about that in terms of yeah. that ball game up in, in, in Jackson. Although the Tiger Rats got out of there with a 74-70 win, yeah. they did that with 31 turnovers that the Lady Dragons yeah. had in the ball game, and they still played pretty close. So. Yeah, I mean, they, they uh, uh, it was a, it was a it was a, a well contested game on both um, on both on both sides. So hopefully, hopefully our women can pull it out. You know, they got Coach Powell, so she's. Uh, you know, she's a she's she. In my opinion, is a Don Staley of Division Two basketball. Okay. So, I hope she that. can pull it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let's talk a little bit about men's basketball now. Not yes, playing sir. tonight because this is a makeup ball game that you, we got a chance to get that one in on the men's side when they came here first time. But you got two ball games left on the season. If we yeah. start thinking about the tournament, mm -hmm. how big are these next two ball games for the Tigers of Tuskegee? Well, Saturday's game is a big game just because it's our next game, and uh, we can kind of control our destiny a little bit. And it's our last two home games, and we've given some away at home. So 
I think our guys are going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and try to try to play well at home. You know, we, we need to play well in February and March, and it's that time of the year where, we you know, we have to step up and get it done. And, and uh, we're cognizant of that. Of that. And uh, it's a lot of balance on our side, of, uh, on, the, on the west and the east. You know, things are jumbled up at the top on both sides. So we'll have to play well to win. You know, such a straight can really shoot the ball. They're well coached. And um, um, they, they got some guards that, could, that shoot good percentages from threes. And um, so hopefully we can slow them down and get it done Saturday. I know you talk about it. You think about it game by game. Yeah. And uh, we're making the comments about the ball game coming up yeah. on Saturday, but the two collectively you right. talked about it prior to tonight's ball game mm-hmm. that they are really destiny shapers for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee as it relates to the tournament. It, it really is. Um, uh, we've we've normally limped into the tournament either with injuries. You know, a few years <laughs> ago, right. I, I leading score towards uh, had a partial tear of the MCL, and we limped into the tournament, and didn't, that didn't go well for us. And our last five conference games that year were on the road before we went to. Rock Hill, and I think we're in a better spot this year, and we just have to play and execute. And Monday's game is going to be good because they're so athletic, they're so talented, they can really shoot the ball. They got six seniors, uh, they're well coached, they play hard, and um, Coach Jackson does a great job. So these two games will be tough for us. And but you know, all the games at this time of the year, you know, you got to play well to win, and uh, we can't let up. Looking at the tournament, uh, and we talked a little bit about this. Uh, right now, as you look at the standings in the conference, right. they're showing Tuskegee as number two. And uh, I'm offering you the opportunity to explain what the storyline is I, with that. Cause I can't really explain it. You know, we, you know at, shoot, a week ago we were number three. So I, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with the standings. I just, we just play one game at a time. And, and um, um, you know, I can't even – make hotel reservations on a, on a, on a, a check-in date because we can go anywhere from first to fourth. Or so, you know, we're, we're going to have to uh, lock in and play. And, and um, I, I love it. I love this time of the year. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great time uh, for our guys to, to step up to the plate and get some stuff done. Two ball games left on the regular season. We'll be right here with the coverage, Coach, as we get to thinking about the tournament after that. We'll right. see you right here at Chappie James on Saturday. Hey, I really want to thank you for all you've done. Oh. Uh, you, you bought a, a new a new field to Chappie. Um, uh, our people are out, you know, that are able to uh, log in. I, I really want to thank you, uh, and I certainly want to thank Coach Ruffin for making Indeed. it possible. Um, it's little things like this that mean a lot to our guys because we have guys from all over the region and all over the country, and, and for their family to be to check in and see a high level coverage like this man we should we certainly appreciate you thank you so Uh, i really do i appreciate appreciate you yeah indeed and we should make note going away that monday is going to be senior night you talk about some of the seniors on your team i know it's been a joy to work with them and be a night of celebration on monday for them as well i always cry on senior night i'm a big cry baby on senior night (laughs) i got five good ones this year so uh i'm 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 crying in the future as well so i hate to lose these guys but i hope we don't get too emotional that we can't win the game indeed Best yeah. luck we'll see you here on Saturday, Coach. I see you. Thank you so much. Head Coach Spencer Taylor talking to us about the Tigers of Tuskegee as they get set for basketball action. We'll have that coverage for you right here on the Golden Tigers Sports Network on Saturday following women's action. As all the teams now starting to look toward that SIC tournament and seeding going forward. Back to live action on the floor. Tuskegee already cut into that lane lead. At the intermission, now it's down to a five-point lead. Back down at the block, they go inside, and again, Brian Tate, Breland Tate get a, gets a lay in on the inside for the Lady Dragons. That's the one thing that the Tigerettes have got to cut in this second half is the inside play by the Lady Dragons as Tuskegee works it on the inside. Stannard got it to the rack, missed on the shot. That leads to a run out by the Lady Dragons. And floater right side is off the mark with another rebound on the offensive side of the floor. Lady Dragons just a step quicker than Tuskegee. And getting to the basketball first. Braylon Tate, the junior, at the line to shoot. And she got the first free throw. 8.30 left here in the third quarter. Lead back up to 8 for the Lady Dragons. Second one pops out. Jackson clears for Tuskegee.
Poland works it left side, gets swatted there on the penetration. Griggs slapped her across the arms. Non-shooting foul for the Tigerettes. Sabria Lee. Lee back out on the floor for Coach Dixon. Boland to inbound it, pushes it to Jackson, right back to Brittany with the jumper, tried to bank it, but she missed. She'll run down the Aaron shot. Got some space in the corner on the jumper here. Yes. She found the spot on the floor, created the separation, able to get the basket for the Tigerettes. Back the other way now. This is Goss with the basketball. She will fire a three-pointer and knock it down for the Lady Dragons. So inside and out, it's working for the Lady Dragons so far. They lead it 51-42. Golan behind the back in the paint. Jumper, got a spinner, had a good look. Stanard saved it, but it came right over to the Lady Dragons. Willis going for the steal at the baseline. It will stay with Lane College, though. Good job by Jatoria. One-on-one -on -one defense in the backcourt. to the floor to pass and throw it right over to Stannard and Tuskegee. Boland got some space right side. She'll push all the way to the rack, banked it, they get the block and the basket. So Brittany Boland, the sophomore, is starting to go to work for the Tigerettes. Take a look at Brittany on her penetration. Coming right at you toward your living room there. Good step there. Good body control on the lay and gets rewarded with the foul. So she got the basket, chance for the three point play. Boland missed on the free throw. Rebound, Fuffa Boland stole it away. Brittany with the jumper, Rimmer off the mark, tapped around. Standard had it for a moment, and it comes clear to Goss and the Dragons. Neal at the block, Curry in the paint. Back out, this is Goss for three, got it again. So Goss goes back to back on the three pointers for the Lady Dragons. Lead to 10. Brittany, right side Willis. Jackson trying to find space, she'll set a screen. They go to roll inside and tapped around and over to the Lady Dragons. Neal, over to Lee. Lee at the block and a whistle. Tate got in front of the defense again, and she's fouled at the baseline. Six thirty-five remains here in the Chappie James Center, and a couple of substitutions on the line now, are on the floor now for Coach Powell. Samaya Abdul Rahim back out on the floor. Nadia Thorman McKee back out. So it's Bolin, Abdul Rahim, Jackson, Willis. And Thorman McKee for Tuskegee. Aaron Isabel, the freshman out on the floor for Coach Dixon in Lane College. Goss departs the lineup. Tate shooting. Missed on the first. Junior from Baton Rouge set for the second of two. Got that one. Dragon lead has been as large as 14 in this ball game. Willis works a weave and a whistle. They call the foul on Abdur Rahim. Now correction, Willis trying to set a screen for Abdur Rahim. Coming near the top, so Willis picks up the foul. So, Jatoria Willis and Ashila Jackson have struggled mightily in this basketball game for the Tigerettes. Jordan Neal missed on her crip shot in the paint. Here comes Boland trying to pick up the slack. Brittany 
Left side, now bounce back over to Willis, right side. You cannot do that any better than what Brittany Boland did that trip down the floor. Drew the defense and kind of a wraparound bounce pass for Willis for the basket. And back the other way, inside, challenging. Boland took it away from Lee. They try to go up the floor to Willis and throw it away. Tigerette, one step forward, two steps back. Got that turnover and then tossed it right back over. Briggs handles out front. Todd batted away. Bolin. Willis batted it away. Bolin right side. Dumped it down low. Abdul Rahim. Oh, yeah. Good defensive work by Willis to get that started. That's what the good players do. If one thing is struggling, you do the other thing. She did a great defensive job there for the Tigerettes. Down at the block, to the rack, and somehow trying to bake it home there was Tate and whistles as the basketball is batted out of bounds. Tate in all kinds of traffic down at the block, able to find some space and got the basketball to the cylinder. Kept it alive for the Lady Dragons. As Rivera Goss comes back out on the floor for Coach Dixon and Lane. Entry pass. Inside, Tate whistles and back the other way. Push off by her inside. Nadia, what a good defensive effort that time to take the charge by Tate. Could be tangling up in the middle there. And Nadia Thorman McKee with a good job of squaring up to take it. It's a small thing, so let's see if that leads to an effort here offensively for a basket for Tuskegee. Bolin works it left side. Willis handles. She'll work right side, whistles. And that's away from the basketball. They're gonna call that foul on the Griggs for the Lady Dragons. So Carnesia Griggs with a foul. Tuskegee far side of the floor as Jordan Neal comes back out on the floor for Lane. We are back here on Saturday, men's and women's basketball. And Tigerette hosting the Lady Marauders of Central State and the men to follow. Critical games for the men. Abdul Rahim with the jumper, softly done but missed on the shot. You heard Coach Taylor talk about it, that you know they can really create their own fate, the men can, by doing what they need to do in the last two ball games of the regular season, and that is win them both. Bowling back the other way now. They gave us some space. Brittany with the jumper, front of the iron. Rebound. Jackson got it back to the cylinder. And she'll get a whistle going to the line for Tuskegee. Ashila, the redshirt senior. This is the kind of play you'll see from a senior. Knew she was fouled, but with the headsy effort to go ahead and get it to the rack with the hope that she could hit that jumper. She did not hit the jumper, but she's going to the line to shoot for the Tigerettes. 438 remains in the third. 55-48. Lady Dragons lead it. Tigerettes on their heels. More with basketball action on the Golden Tiger Sports Network after this. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Back live inside Chappie James Center on the campus of Tuskegee University. Tuskegee trailing at 55-48 to the Lady Dragons and Lane College. At the line, Mashaila Jackson to shoot for Tuskegee to try to cut into that lead. Tuskegee has trailed throughout this entire ball game. As Jackson hits the first free throw. Reminder that the SIAC tournament starts on February 25th. We're down in Savannah, Georgia this year for the tournament. 
more information about the tournament, ticket information, bracketing, and all of that, you can visit the SIAC at www.thesiac.com. So Jackson got them both from the line. Make it 55-49. Neal pressured out front, and they get Brittany Bolin for the foul. So Bolin picks up her first. Non-shooting foul for the Lady Dragons. Let's get the sense that Tuskegee could just overcome and claim a lead. Then the rhythm would be more of their liking, and maybe could relax a little bit. Yeah. Right now, just having difficulty defending inside and not doing that well from the floor as it relates to shooting. And certainly are games like that during the course of a season. Trying to see if they can't find the remedy or an answer. With 420 left here in the third. Neal hits the first free throw for Lane College. And got them both. Abdul Rahim handles Brittany Bolin. A shot at Jackson. Victoria Willis. And Maria Thorman McKee out on the floor. Abdul Rahim to the rack. Got it airborne and got the soft roll right side for the lay in. SIAC newcomer of the week. Abdul Rahim with that basket. Up top. Neal handles. Try to give and go there, and they throw it away. Here comes Jackson with a three-on-one. Bounce pass left side, and Willis tried one more bounce pass to Thorman McKee when she had an easy lane to the basket. Just tried a little touch pass and led Thorman McKee too far. Perfect set, the three-on-one. Neal across the timeline for the Dragons. Up top, this is Curry. Floater to the rack, missed on the shot. Good square out that time by Jackson at the block. Here comes Abdul Rahim. May have doubled there, but no call. You'll have it in the paint. Euro step right side, missed on the shot. Rebound, putbacks off the mark by Jackson. Now Thorman McKee right side. She will finish for the Tigerettes. Now the lead down to four. Turnover here with 310 will work wonders. That may be it. They throw it away in the corner. Basketball over. Think it's going to go over to Tuskegee when we get back to play. 307 remains in the third. Tuskegee has cut the lead to 57 53. Timeout. We'll take a break. When we come back, we believe Tuskegee will have the basketball. More coming your way on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easy to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Home. Where you hang out with friends. Do homework. Relax. Explore. Where you can be yourself. Come home to Tuskegee University. Get the education that changes lives, including your own. Back live inside Chappie James, cheerleaders as they are trying to rev the crowd. 307 left here in the third. Tuskegee will have the basketball. They trail it 57-53. Important trip down the floor for the Tigerettes here. Ariel McElroy inserted into the lineup. Samaya Abdul Rahim out on the floor. Shyla Jackson out there, Nadia Thorman McKee, and Jatoria Willis. The five after the timeout for Tuskegee. McElroy will inbound it in the backcourt. Lady Dragons hustling back there to show full court pressure. Willis charges, and she'll handle in the backcourt. Victoria pushing across the timeline, right side now, across the floor. Nadia to the rack, whistles down low, she's fouled. Tamaya Curry, the junior, trying to catch up with that play. And good transition there from the 
with Willis at the block to Thorman McKee. And now they'll send Nadia to the line to shoot. Nadia came into the game 65% free throw shooting. 83 of 128. Braylon Tate back out on the floor for the Dragons of Lane College. Nadia missed on the first, hit it at the front of the iron. Tell-tell difference in this basketball game may come down to what the Tigerettes do from the free throw line. Trying to play catch up in this basketball game. What you do from the line can only help you if you make them. Mario for the second of two. That one falls good on the spin. So the lead by the Lady Dragons cut to three. Tuskegee, and they get a stop here. Backcourt pressure, Abdul Rahim went for the steal and they'll get her for the foul. Just a fraction lead on that, trying to pick off that bounce pass across the floor from Sabria Lee. Instead, that sends the Lady Dragons to the line to shoot with 2.50 remaining in the third. Neil, the senior, will be shooting. Missed on that first of two. Muskegee trailing by three at this point. Neil goes one of two from the line, so the lead up the four for Lane. Abdul Rahim handles across the timeline. Bounce pass Willis. Jatoria up to Ashila. Ashila, hard push right side, lost the dribble. Three second violation on the Tigerettes. Tuskegee just not very sure what they wanted to do that trip down the floor. Jackson appeared that she was headed to the rack right side, but pulled up. Got a lot of traffic in the lane. Backcourt pass, this one's gonna have to be chased down by Neal. And 10 second violation as a result. So good defensive job there by Tuskegee to get the 10 second violation by the Dragons. See if they can convert on a half court set. Abdul Rahim handles out front. We go down to 222 left in the third. Jackson up top over to Willis. Victoria hard push right side behind the back and lost the basketball. My oh my. Tuskegee just struggling mightily in this basketball game. Neal handles out front for the Lady Dragons. Under two minutes left third now. Goss. Entry pass, whistles, and a push off. Going back the other way, they were trying to work it down low to Tate. Tate fighting for position. Got caught for the foul. Erin Isabel back out on the floor now for Coach Dixon. She'll replace Sabria Lee in the lineup. Kaylin Taylor Simmons. First team all conference out on the floor now for the Lady Dragons as well. Abdul Rahim out front now for the Tigerettes. On a weave, this is McElroy. Thurman the key surveys, tries to get it to Jackson, but she's denied inside. Abdul Rahim entry path through it too deep inside, another turnover. They're trying to get it down low to Jackson, but too much lift on the pass by Abdul Rahim. Minute 23 left in the third. Basketball almost taken away by Jackson. Jumper out front by Isabel. Shot an air ball, but an easy backside rebound. But the putback is missed by Simmons on the inside. Willis, right side, McElroy. Across the floor to Abdul Rahim. She'll push right side, Euro step to the rack, spinner is off the mark. Basketball comes clear to the Lady Dragons. Simmons picked it up off the surface inside the paint. Third quarter winding down. 
Four point lead for the Lady Dragons. The Kylie entry pass taken away by Willis. Willis trying to work it up the floor. Across the timeline with the quick step. Jatoria right side in the paint and a whistle. Blocked down low. It'll be Guevara Goss guilty of the foul. And this will send Willis to the line for Tuskegee. She'll be shooting two here. 26 seconds left in the third. Free throws ever so important, important for the Tigerettes. Victoria got the first one to fall. Tuskegee will be looking to get a stop after this free throw attempt. Willis missed on the free throw. Three-point lead for the Lady Dragons as we approach the end of the third quarter. They can play it for the final shot of the quarter as Neal handles out front. Eight. They dump it down low, down deep. Taken away by Abdul Rahim. But Abdul Rahim trying to get it up the floor. Got Willis there. She got it airborne and got the shot before the buzzer. Boy, it took them three quarters to finally get something going in their favor. And they finished the end of the third. Abdul Rahim up the floor. Willis knew she had to get it airborne quickly, and she did. And the result, the shooters roll, and it falls good. Right now, Tuskegee cut the lead to just one. They trail it 58-57 to the Lady Dragons. We'll get set for the final 10 minutes here from the Chappie James Center on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Are you looking for education that leads to career success and something more? We are Tuskegee University, one of the nation's top ranked HBCUs. We believe in education to fulfill your purpose. Here, you work hard because you dream harder. By pursuing your purpose, you will make a difference. Are you ready for something big? Let's get started. Hey, future business leader. Launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Back live inside Chappie James as we get set to go to the fourth quarter. Tuskegee finally getting something good happening their way, their way at the end of the third quarter. Got that basket just before the buzzer. And they cut the lead by the Lady Dragons to just a point. Still work to do for the Tigerettes, though. Goss handles out front for the Lady Dragons. Hard push on Bolin. Now to Neal. Behind the arc, she's got free for three. Missed on the shot. Rebound, Abdur Rahim. Tuskegee can get his first lead of the ball game here. Up top, Bolin. Hard push right side. Jackson with the jumper. Got it for the Tigerettes. So Tuskegee claims the lead with 9.32 left in the basketball game. Goss pushes in the corner. This is Tate with the basketball. Her shot's off the mark. Isabel got the rebound, but she traveled as she slipped on the surface. So Tuskegee by a point now. Can build this trip down the floor. Erin Isabel getting up limping, headed down the floor for the Lady Dragons. Bolin handles in the backcourt for Tuskegee. Now to Willis. First lead of the ball game for the Tigerettes. Victoria out front. Hard push by her right side to the rack. Nothing designed about that. She was just going one-on-one. -on -one. Back the other way. Miss Lee in there. Jackson toes the line up to Abdul Rahim. Three on two basketball for the Tigerettes. Abdul Rahim in the corner, Willis. Jatoria, jumper, foul on extended. Banked it home for the Tigerettes. Willis comes alive. Tuskegee 61, Lady Dragons 58. 8.36 remains in the ball game. Goss out front, lost her dribble. Bounce pass, move inside the paint. May have been a travel there. We'll have a whistle instead against Brittany Bolin. They were trying to get it into the hands of Kayla Simmons. 
Neil will inbound the right of the cylinder for the Lady Dragons. Entry pass at the block. Good defensive work there by Thorman McKee. Basketball back to Tate, though, to the glass, and she got the bank lay in left side. Abdur Rahim comes across the timeline with Tuskegee leading it by a point. Sumaya, left side bowling. Brittany, nice cross dribble. Left side all the way to the rack. Spinner off the mark, but she's fouled. She'll go to the line. Chance there for a three-point play because crew chief Victor Myers was definitely waiting to see if that basketball fell. He was going to allow that basket. Sabria Lee back out on the floor. She'll replace Aaron Isabel. Isabel came up limping a couple of trips down the full floor prior to this side. And she will go to the sideline for the Lady Dragons. The sophomore Brittany Bolin at the line to shoot with 8.01 left in the contest. Brittany for the first, got that one to fall. So Skeegee got its first lead of the ball game at the beginning of this fourth quarter. Brittany good on the second as well. Half court trapped by the Tigerettes. As Neal lost her dribble going up the floor, goes over to Lee. Tate penetrates left side, whistles, and going back the other way. Foreman McKee with another defensive play inside the paint to take the charge. She had a big one in the first half, comes away with another one here. So that was the fifth personal on Breland Tate for the Lady Dragons. And the Tigerettes all too happy to see her foul out of this basketball game. She was causing fits at the baseline for the Tigerettes defensively. They don't have to worry about her anymore. They bring Maya Moore back out on the floor, the Lady Dragons do. Tuskegee by three, trying to get to their largest lead of five if they can get a basket here. Abdul Rahim, give and go. Jackson, left side to the rack, missed on the shot. Backside put back, Thorman McKee for the lay-in. Now the Tigerettes come alive. They lead it by five. We go down to 724 left in the ball game. Basketball stolen away, four on no for the Tigerettes. Jatoria got the lay-in right side. Tuskegee up by seven now. Trying to take the wheels off the Dragons and get another steal. Four on no again. This time, Thorman McKee, she gets the lay in. Just that quickly, a nine point swing for the Tigerettes. They lead it 69 60. The pressure. They throw it up the floor. Thorman McKee comes away with another one. They're going to call a foul, I believe. I think they're going to call that foul on Maya Moore. And we go back the other way, shooting. An orderly side out in the backcourt for the Tigerettes. The swing has taken place here in Chappie James. Tuskegee trailed by as many as 14 in this ball game. With 6.48 remaining in it, they lead by nine. Good opportunity to get another basket here to just solidify that lead to double digits. Willis back pedals out front. She'll work off of screen. Got some space. Now head fake right side. Jumper right corner. Count it for the Tigerettes. You've got to love this team. Pass at the sideline. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the, they call the foul on Abdul Rahim just in front of the Lady Dragon bench. Tuskegee leading by 11. Neal out front for the Lady Dragons. Works it down in the corner. On the move now. Inside paint on a Euro step. Shot is off the mark by Lee. Basketball fought for and the rebound comes clear to Simmons and she got the lay in. Her 
We're under six minutes left. Abdul Rahim handles out front. Bounce pass, top of the key. Thurman McKee with it. Right side, hard push by Nadia to the rack. Left it short. Jackson trying to come in to get that rebound. And we're going back the other way. Rivera Goss back out on the floor now for the Lady Dragons. She'll replace Neal in their lineup. Willis, Thurman McKee, McElroy, Bolden, and Jackson out on the floor for the Tigerettes. Alicia Griggs in the backcourt finally picks it up for the Lady Dragons. Slices in and she'll be tripped here. The foul going to be called on Brittany Bolin. So Bolin picks up her fourth with 5.43 remaining in the ballgame. Griggs inbounds it. And she'll take it back at top of the key. They double her. Slicing down in the paint is Curry. Hard push right side, missed on the shot, but there's Simmons there for a putback and a foul down low. Tuskegee just not blocking out Simmons at all at the baseline. Just not willing to slide in and get that body position between her and the cylinder to get the rebound. Instead, she's fouled and she's at the line shooting. Simmons got the first free throw for Lane College. They got Tate out of the ball game on her fifth personal. And now Simmons trying to step in and take up the slack for the Lady Dragons. McElroy over to Willis in the backcourt. Full court pressure by the Lady Dragons. victoria has got a hurry now. Got to get it across the timeline. Got it to McElroy. Foul on extended with the jumper. Spinner falls good for Ariel. Across the timeline. This is Griggs. All the way through. Left side. Got a reverse to the cylinder. Missed on the shot. Basketball tapped by Jackson. Over to Bolin. Skeegee with a basket. Can get a double digit lead here. Bolin out front. We're under five minutes left. Willis right side. Nadia setting a screen. Jatoria foul unextended. Backs up. Pushes right side. Brittany thought three. Now head fakes inside the paint. Jackson foul unextended. Count out. Them. Now they are finding the cylinder here at Chappie James. Behind the arc. Lady Dragons with it. This is Griggs. She'll push right side, hard bounce there. And going to be a blocking foul call there on Nadia this time. Took a hard shot there on the penetration. She'll pick up her third. That will send Carnesia Griggs to the line for Lane. 4.22 remains as you take a look at this hard foul there. Nadia trying to get to the position to take the charge. Didn't quite get there and paid the price with the contact there. 4.22 remains. Tuskegee takes a lead, 75-64. Back with more on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, Sayak, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. Players getting set to make it back out onto the floor with 24-22 remaining. Tuskegee saw the mountain, climbed the mountain, and they lead it right now, 75-64. At the line for the Lady Dragons. Carnesia Griggs, the sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. Had nine points, 10 rebounds when these teams played just under a week ago. Shooting here. Griggs gets the first.
Tuskegee challenged in that first half. Just never could just get things working all together. They were finally able to do it as a start at the end of the third and take their first lead at the beginning of the fourth. McElroy half court set now for the Tigerettes. Thurman McKee out front. Tuskegee wants to be delivered before they get a shot off. McElroy, foul on extended, got some space, and you can count that one for Ariel McElroy. Big basket there for the Tigerettes. At the mid stripe, and the Lady Dragons throw it away. So the turnover gives it back to Tuskegee. They lead it by 11. They take it their largest lead of the ball game, 13 with a basket here. As we go under four minutes left. Brittany out front for the Tigerettes. Thought about the bounce pass, pulls back instead. Now over to Nadia behind the jumper left side. Nadia left it short, but Jackson there for the rebound. And that's what the redshirt senior does. Get space and got the lay in on the inside. Make it 13 to lead. Neal out front. Back to Griggs. Griggs all the way through underneath, left the lay in short. Jackson had it, but she and Stannard collide below the block. And it looks like they're going to call a foul on Kayla Simmons, I believe. Yeah, it will be on Simmons. So Simmons picks up her fourth. And Tuskegee will have the basketball. Fortunately, that foul was called on Simmons because down low, Jackson and Amaria just kind of collided down low. The basketball was loose and free for a moment. 3.16 remains. Bowling across the timeline for Tuskegee. Brittany right side, up top to Jackson. Ashila, hard push right side, whistles on the play. Will they give her the basket? And we get it before the shot. I think that's going to be called on Simmons. If it is, that'll be her fifth. It was on Simmons. So she falls out of the ball game as well. So Tuskegee got both of the Strong players for the Lady Dragons on the inside fouled out of this ball game. Tate went first. Now Simmons goes with 3:01 left in the basketball game. Jackson contact there. Shot fell off, and she will be going to the line. And call the foul on Tamia Curry, and uh, Ashila going to the line to shoot for Tuskegee. Not sure if that was Curry's fifth foul or not, but she did depart the basketball game. So she did foul out. So three of the Lady Dragons depart the basketball game with fifth fouls. That's Curry, Tate, and Simmons. How many more bodies does Coach Dixon have over there? As Jackson hits that first free throw. You wouldn't know it by looking at the scoreboard now, but this has been a struggle for the Tigerettes as Jackson knocks them both down from the line to make it 81-66. Hard move inside the paint, floater to the racks off the mark. Shot was taken by Sabria Lee. A correction, got Lee on that shot, but she missed. Tuskegee with the basketball. Bowling across the timeline. As we go down to 237. Brittany, hard push right side, spins, links back with the jumper. You can count that one as well. Brittany Bowling just got the defense backpedaling inside the paint with the lean back and soft jumper. She makes it 83-66. Basketball tickling out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Lady Dragons. That one went right between the wickets of Amari Standard. Mario Standard, four. The Tigerettes will stay with Lane. 2.17 left in the basketball game. Tuskegee trying to go to 18-0. 
And undefeated in conference play. Goss with a three-pointer. This one bounces high and comes clear to Jackson. Stumbled for a moment and she lost it on the surface. Now she tries to take it back on the inside. And a travel violation called. That'll go with the travel violation with Jackson. Not sure she had possession of the basketball. She was trying to wrest it away from Lee. Entry pass out front to Neal. Out front, Goss missed on that three-point shot. She was hitting him earlier in the ball game. Boland clears over to Willis. Under two left in the ball game now. Willis backpedals out front. Jackson, left block, hard spin, turns to the rack, got the jump of the fall. And I believe she was partially deflected, hit on the arm there by Moore, but no call. But Ashila able to still get it toward the cylinder and softly knocked it down. My oh my, how things have just changed so quickly here, seemingly inside the Chappie James Center. Tuskegee getting his first lead at the start of the fourth quarter. And almost about to go up by 20 points here. They fouled out three of the main players for the Dragons of Lane College down the stretch. As Griggs goes to the line. Simmons, Tate, and Curry fouled out of the basketball game. First free throw from the line by Griggs is off the mark. Hope to have Coach Powell join us in the postgame to get her thoughts about this contest. Seemingly a little bit more relaxed at the sideline as you see her there. Shot underneath the cylinder and off the mark. Brittany chases that errant shot down for the rebound. Across the timeline, we're under a minute remaining. So quite a scare here in the Chappie James Center, but Tuskegee weathered the storm, came back from as many as 14, and on their way to their 18th conference win, and to their 21st win on the season. Currently ranked seventh in D2, the South region, and 24th overall in the WBCA coaches poll. Neal drops a three-pointer outside for the Lady Dragons. Just 31 seconds remains here. Bowling out front. She did a good job of sparking the Tigerettes when she was the only one actually doing any scoring on the floor. Missed on a shot there and a rebound backside goes to Lee. Lee bumped up the floor by Nadia and she will be guilty of the foul there. That may be Nadia's fifth. Only four on Nadia, so she will get the state of distance of the game if she doesn't foul with 8.9 seconds left. First free throw at the line. It's good by Lee. You can't see it from that shot, but she is breathing a sigh of relief. Coach Powell is. 85-71 after the free throws. Bowling in the backcourt. Over to Standard. And Tuskegee can run it out here. They will win it. 85-71 over a gutsy group from Lane College. But at the end of the night, Tuskegee has just enough staying power to come back from 14 and win it by 14. Reminder that the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, TIA and Cricket Wilders are pleased to bring this year's TIA Basketball Championship Tournament to the hostess city of the South, Savannah, Georgia. Join us for eight days of competition as 29 teams compete for the coveted SIAC Women and Men's Crown. Meet us there on Saturday, February 25th for the tip-off of the 2023 TIA SIAC Basketball Championship from Savannah. And that'll be in the Tigers Arena on the Savannah State campus with conference champions being crowned on Saturday, March 4th. For ticket information, tournament announcements, and updates, visit www.thesiac.com. And one team that's going to be 
in perfect st state as they get set for the SIC tournament. Are those ladies departing toward the locker room there? Tigerettes of Tuskegee push their conference mark to 18 and 0, and they go to 21 and 3 overall. Came in already having clinched the number west. And they will be go in seeded number one in the West and won't have to play until the quarterfinal round, which will be that third Wednesday when the Tigerettes get into playing action for the tournament. Still a little bit of work ahead, though. Two ball games left on the regular season. They want to finish it undefeated if they can. Will be the second time that they've done it in the 2000s. The team in 2016 went 16 and 0 that year. But Tuskegee and some rarefied air, the Tigerettes are. And an impressive overall conference mark and an impressive overall mark. 21-3 now and 18-0 and in the SIAC. So they win it 85-71 over the Lady Dragons of Lane College, who led most of the way of this basketball game, led by as many as 14 at one point in the contest. But Tuskegee just never gave up, did not have their best offensive performance of the season. But in that second half, it came alive in at the end of that third quarter and really came alive in the fourth to really stretch their lead over the Lady Dragons of Lane College. So Tuskegee wins it, 85-71. We'll take a time out here and back to wrap things up on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Oh. Where you hang out with friends, do homework, relax, explore, where you can be yourself. Come home to Tuskegee University. Get the education that changes lives, including your own. Are you looking for education that leads to career success and something more? We are Tuskegee University one of the nation's top-ranked HBCUs. We believe in education to fulfill your purpose. Here, you work hard because you dream harder. By pursuing your purpose, you will make a difference. Are you ready for something big? Let's get started. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, it's kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. The students make the institution special. You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. Don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things and that makes for a better company is Diverse Minds. I am Kaylin Parm, a graduating senior construction science and management major hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. In, in this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented. I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not gonna be a lot of people like me, and that's okay because we're still working for diversity, but the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have a black girl here and an Asian guy there, yeah. but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs, you'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And that's got to be part of leadership. By Procor taking the lead on this scholarship program and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the other HBCUs.
The Lifting the Veil of Ignorance statue represents Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Lifting the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. Hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a social professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we open to giving these students chances, get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. You just gotta give them a chance. We're back live inside the Chappie James Center. Post game from here, Tuskegee has to come off of the deck, but they're able to do it. They went at 85-71 over a scrappy bunch from Lane College, the Lady Dragons. Tuskegee trailed most of this basketball game, only got it to a point right at the end of the third quarter, trailed by as many as 14 in the ball game. Went into the fourth quarter down a point and just really blew the wheels off in that fourth quarter, coming alive from the floor and just commanding this basketball game to take the win over the Lady Dragons of Lane College. Took them a while to do it, but they finally got the shooting rhythm together, finally got the defense together, and it's caused a lot of turnovers in the ball game and then starting to hit their shots in that fourth quarter to give them the win. The win takes Tuskegee to 18 in a row in SIAC play with two more ball games left on the season, trying to come through the regular season unblemished in conference play. And right now at 21 and three, Good position for the Tigerettes. They will go into the tournament, already clinched the West with the number one seed in the West, which means they don't have to play until Wednesday of the tournament in the quarterfinal round. So that'll give them an opportunity to really get their legs under them and be ready for full play as it relates to the tournament. But two ball games still left on the regular season. We're back here in Chappie James Center on Saturday when the Tigerettes and the Tigers will meet the Lady Marauders and the Marauders of Central State. That'll be the ball game on Saturday. Then they'll close the regular season right back here at Chappie James on Monday against the Thoroughbreds and the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. We hope you make your plans to join us then to support both these exciting teams from Tuskegee University. That'll do it for our coverage here tonight from the Chappie James Center. Once again, just women's action tonight, and Tuskegee wins at 85-71 over the Lady Dragons of Lane College. Special thanks to Tuskegee University President Dr. Charlotte Morris for all of her work and support supporting the Golden Tiger Sports Network. It's particular thanks to Director of Athletics Reginald Ruffin for envisioning the Tiger Sports Network. And to Tanya Lee and Stephen Smith from the Communications and Marketing Department, they have been so supportive of our effort here on the campus. Jordan Benson, Nick Brown, Game Operations and Sports Information for Tuskegee University has been invaluable in terms of their services. And to our production team, producer director Eric Tabor, and our camera operators tonight, Matthew Jackson Starks, Felipe Banks, and Cassandra Jones, all chipping in to make the broadcast possible tonight. That'll do it for our coverage from here. See you right back here on Saturday in Chappie James Center. Charles Watson, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. <laughs>